you're gonna do today. Today you're gonna use uh, a little bit of parallel line development to create a box. Now it doesn't look like much, but with this box you're gonna be using for the first time the pair of aviation snips, straights, they're yellow handled. There's a couple other handles that are red and green, and red you would think would cut to the right because of the red R, but actually red cuts to the left, green cuts to the right, so you'll see some others in there. It's best if you just get the yellows for what we're going to do. And then what we're going to do is first we're going to break out a piece, which I already have at three inches, but you need to cut it in a shear uh, eight and a half inches long, so that leaves us with this. Once you get the eight and a half inch piece long, I'm gonna show you how to make the lines We're using this scribe, which keeps it pretty much straight and parallel so you don't have to measure with a ruler and then try and use a marker. Because a marker's thickness is about a sixteenth of an inch, a little bit, well, pretty close to that. And the scribe of a line of this uh, screw head is, is less than that. It's like a sixty-fourth of an inch. And when we're doing the sheet metal, it's imperative that the numbers are right on. All right, so it can't be three inches and two sixteenths, which is an eighth. It's got to be three inches. So that's why. And then once you do a marker, you don't know which side of the line you're going to bend or cut on because it's so thick. And that, that believe it or not, that sixteenth of an inch will make a difference to the overall outcome of this piece of duct work. So we're going to cut it to eight and a half inches. I'm going to show you how to use the scribe to scribe these lines here, pretty much two by two boxes with a half inch. Uh, hem and fold on either side. One's going to be 90, one's going to be 180. We'll fabricate it in the pan break over here doing the other bends and then we're going to use the tack welder with a 2 by 2 inch piece for the bottom and then we'll spray some duct insulation glue which normally we use for soundproofing or for insulation in the duct but they're going to be using it today to put a little felt piece on and you actually get to take this project home. This is one of the ones you get to take home. So let's go ahead and get started on it. First thing you're going to do is just make sure that you got a piece that's coming around that is three inches on either side because sometimes they don't get cut square, all right, and it could be a little longer on one side than the other. So I'm going to pass those around and then we're going to go ahead and I could use the scribe. Now the way this scribe works is it has a ruler on the side and the ruler lines up with the edge right here. So if I wanted a one inch line, I could line up the one with the edge right here and that gives me a one. Now everybody thinks that first line is like the first sixteenth or the first eighth. Actually, between the tip of the screw to the guide right here, that first line is a quarter inch. So if you take a look and I was to measure it with a ruler, I should have a quarter inch from the tip of the screw to the tip of the guide. So we're not going to use the quarter inch. The first one we're going to use is the half inch, and that's going to be this half inch line right so we got interrupted there, but we're back on track. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to mark an eight and a half inch line on from one edge over here, eight and a half inches. All right, and you just need two points, and you're going to try and put the dot right in the center because we're going to slice it right in the center. And then come on over here to the shear. There's also something else I could do with the shear. Like if I wanted to make sure that we cut an eight and a half inch piece, the shear has a guide. So we can move this shear back, and the way these knobs, I've had to move it a lot, I can loosen up the two set screws, that's what these are, and then these two work the angles on the side. So we're gonna set it up, and there's a ruler here too. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up for eight and a half inches on either side, and that should line up with my two dots when I put the slide the piece of metal in. Now look, you gotta be careful. Wherever you see yellow, there's gonna be warning. So if I put my foot here, like you see how Karen's foot's over getting underneath there? Oh, I can smack that down there like that. That's bad. Also, if we had a real long piece of metal, we can use this uh, roller. But when it's not in use, we're just going to set it back there. But again, right here, the foot pedal, when it comes down, if your foot's under it, your foot's going to get squished. And then you notice this action right in here when I'm pulling down on the foot pedal, pushing down on it. This is the blade right in here. Okay, the blade is actually behind this yellow guard. And then you see there's a little piece of plastic. We don't put our fingers here when we're cutting. Nobody kind of stands around right here like this because there's a pinch point right here. And then if you have to guide somebody's metal and hold it back here, make sure your fingers do not go up underneath here because in a matter of seconds, when somebody pushes down and they're not paying attention to see if anybody's around here, it could slice the finger through the bone. It's bad. Watch how quickly it cuts this metal. So now that I've got this set of eight and a half, this ruler guide right here is a perpendicular angle, right angle to this guide right here. Bless you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just take it and make sure it goes to the end. And then look at that. My two dots in the center. 
Here's where the blade is. You guys might want to come on over. Here's where the cut's going to be made. Take a look at the two dots right here in the center. See that? So that's where my blade's getting cut. So we're going to line it up so that the blade right here lines up with our cut. And then this has got to be straight. If it's crooked, my, my cut's not going to be square. And we want to keep this square as possible. So I'm going to put this up in here, make sure she's locked in. And then I'll go ahead and I'll push down and it's cut just like that. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and scribe our lines. And pretty much what we're going to do is a half inch line. We already set the guide at a half inch. I'm going to do a half inch on three sides. One long side, another long side, and you can also do it here, but you got to have it off the table enough so that the scribe doesn't interfere with the edge of the table. And then one half inch line here. So I've got this square right here I'm going to notch out, and I'm going to color that in for you guys. And you're going to color all your stuff first before you do any cuts so I can see what you're going to be cutting before you cut it. But I'm going to cut that one there. And now I need to make these two inch boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the scribe to two. All right, two. And I'll just set it on the edge here like that. And there's my first two right there. And then uh, my next line is going to be four. Okay, and then my last line will be, guess what? Two, four, we think. Six. six, okay? Six gets a little hard because I can start to arc it if I don't keep it straight. So I can go ahead and just run the six here. Or if it's too much, I could go back, but I gotta count for that half inch. In order for me to have a two inch square from this half inch, I gotta add the two plus the half, and then I can come back on the back side like this and look up. And when I measure it, it should be a two inch square. And that's a two inch square. And that's a two inch square, two inch square. So then once you're done, I'm gonna make these V's because when we fold the metal this way and then at a 90, it could kink up on us. So we're gonna notch it out to kind of prep it for the folds that we're gonna do in our breaks. And then I'm gonna need like a little notch 45 degree here. And I did a big one there for that, but you can just do the square, that's fine. So once I get these again, let's see here. A little V here and they're almost like V's and the V's open to out the pie shape opens out to the edge of the metal all right so now we've laid it out this is a stretch out you got to kind of think three-dimensional what the box would look like if it was stretched out and I know you can't see all the scribe lines uh, those that are in the classroom can kind of uh, but if you can't kind of tilt it and you can see the reflection a little bit better but that's pretty much what I need you to get up to right now. And then we're going to pick back up and notch it out and fabricate it in about 10 minutes with you guys. All right? Good. Okay, go ahead. All right, now that you're done doing the stretch out, we're going to go ahead and we're going to notch out all our marks. So you're going to notch your 45s here with the snips. Now you could run the snip to the tip, but sometimes it leaves a jagged point at the top. So I would just run it all the way through. And the same thing with here. I wouldn't do the tip to tip. I like to let it go a little bit beyond, but you just got to be careful you don't cut past your line, your half inch line. Uh, but that makes for a little bit better. There's kind of a hook that gets made when you cut with the tip that could get you. And then to get this there, you just take this and wiggle it a few times and we just keep on going with our notches down to our two inch holes. And that's going to go all the way like that. And I'll probably cut them first and then go back and cut them out. And then this one here, I could cut a square. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it as a 45 right here. And then I'm gonna cut back, not quite a 45 right here. So you can kind of clean that up a little bit if you want. But you are gonna need at least a 45 right here to keep the metal from folding back onto itself. And then I can go ahead and get the other pieces. Pretty much just the pie shapes. So I did the tip on that last one. You can see that there's like on these last two with the tip, a little bit of a, just be careful that doesn't cut you. But what we're gonna do now is, hey, what do you got on the edge of your shirt to keep all the string from unraveling and everything? What do they put? What do they call it? Seam? Well, the seam is where they seam it together, right in here. 
But what do you got there on the edge? You got one there. A hem. Uh, a what? A hem. A hem. A hem. So we're going to do a hem bend. Just like you don't want to rub the edge of the metal right there where it's real sharp. It's actually dull. And you know a dull, something dull will cut you worse than something sharp because it rips the skin instead of making a clean cut. So that could hurt somebody. So we're going to actually fold that over to make a nice edge. And that's what this piece right over here is. This is a hem bender and it's already preset for you at a half inch. So all you got to do, and I think I just got to adjust it a little bit, uh, but this thing adjusts back here. Let's go ahead and adjust it back. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty good. So set it up, and this one's gonna go 180, and I'm gonna do a 90. And it doesn't matter which one you do 180, one, one, which one's 90, it can be either one, but it's gonna come all the way up. If it ever doesn't come all the way up, you could have a stop in the side that keeps it from going. That's like what I would wanna do for a 90, right? And then that's not good enough. We're gonna actually squeeze it down, put it back in there, and just raise up a little bit to get that hem to fold tight up against without bending the metal see that so now we got a smooth edge there and then this one's a 90 you can bend 90 or you can put the 90 stop and it will it should stop you right at about 90 all right and you notice how it springs back a little bit so you actually got to go about five to ten degrees over to get it to, to get it to do the bend with it straight so that's it we're done with the hem bender for a second now we're going to come over here to the pan finger break Right, and this thing can be adjusted. I can have it three foot in diameter, or three foot wide in length, and I can adjust these pans depending on what we gotta do. Uh, these fingers pop out, and we can make it adjust. But what you're gonna do, make sure that you have the edge, if you're gonna do it this way, off the side of this finger right here. Reason being, if I put it there and try and squeeze down, what's gonna happen to that metal right there? It's gonna crush it, yeah. So to keep it from crushing, and we start with the closest one and then you got to line up the edge here with the line here for the break and then this thing's got a counterweight on that end so you got to kind of have to be careful but we're going to go ahead and line up the edge of the finger with that all right and then make sure this is off the outside edge both sides need to be down and then here's the counterweight be careful of the counterweight coming coming down make sure it doesn't hit anybody so that's it we see it at 90 degrees and then I bring it back, and we're gonna do another 90 degree. And that should pretty much meet right here when I do 90 on that one. This last one's not gonna be able to be 90 because it's actually gonna fold up back onto itself. So I'm gonna start it just to break the metal and get the crease, and then that's it right there. That's as far as I'm gonna get. And then the last part I can bend together with my hand, but I gotta do this thing here. So we're gonna use this last tool over here to make this uh, box complete. And that's going to be these things here. Cisco made a song about it. You remember Cisco? Anybody remember? You probably were just born when Cisco came out with this song. This was like a 2099. No? The thong song. Tong song. Tong, 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 tong. tong. You never remember it? Yeah. You heard that one? The tong yeah. song? Yeah. That's what I call it. The tong song. Yep. So you take the tongs. Line up your line right there on the edge. Make sure again that you're not folding up over onto yourself. Once you get your line lined up, take the palm of your hand and break the metal. Break it at a 90 degree, and then once you're done, this piece will actually slide up underneath of that hem a little bit, and you can fold it together, and if all your measurements were right on, looks like mine's about a 16th, this is what I'm talking about with it a little bit off. This one looks a little off, so we're not a perfect square, but that's pretty close, okay? You actually will get two times to make it, because it takes a couple times before you can master it, but I'm not done. I need to weld that together. And I've showed you how to solder with a torch, braze with a torch, and do a few other things, dissimilar metals, you know. Now we're going to do tack welding. Tack welding is over here at this machine, and what it does is, it's a transformer. Showed you, talked to you a little bit about transformer, you used one in your project to step down the voltage for 24 volts. Well, this is going the other way. This is actually going to take 120 volts coming in, and it's stepping it up to 10,000 volts between these two electrodes. And these electrodes sometimes get the zinc coating. There is zinc, just like what they use to make pennies, on the outside of this sheet metal. That's what's making it a little shiny. That zinc, right, is gonna burn off a little bit on here. And that's what's uh, actually keeping it from rusting. The metal, when it sits out for a while, normally would rust. This is straight up steel. So to keep it from rusting, they coat it with zinc. So we don't need to prep it or anything. There's no sanding, cleaning, fluxing. But you do gotta make sure it's set up the way you want it. And then there's two handles. One handle raises the electrodes. 
So I'm gonna put one electrode in here like this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze down on it on the bottom end. And then it's best if the box doesn't touch anything else. Now look, the electricity is going from this electrode to this electrode. And when it does, it's gonna create an arc between the two points, and it's gonna fuse the metal together. And sometimes there is some sparks that come out. So if you wanna use some gloves, uh, right I had there. some gloves right around here. here somewhere. Yeah, there they are. All right, some gloves to help, you know, if it gets hot, you might wanna use the gloves. I'm not gonna use them for this one because it's the first time we're using it. But the electrodes will get hot. So I lock it in, lock it in place, line it up, make sure it doesn't touch anything else. And then there's a left-right trigger underneath the handle. It doesn't go up and down like a light switch. You can either do left or right, doesn't matter. But when I do right to left, I'm gonna count to two Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. And you see what happened there, all right? That's a lot of voltage going through there, all right? So that's good. Now I'm gonna pop this back up in the other side. That popped out on me. Once it's done, that is hot. Once it's done, pretty much that's it. Sometimes you can take a screwdriver and pop it free, but really, uh, and then other times, if you leave that on for more than two seconds, it'll burn a hole right through it. So that's pretty much it. You can do another one up top, pop another one up top. Let me get it one up top for you, right? So you can do two. Again, it's best if it doesn't touch anything else or else it kind of shorts the weld out. So we're gonna get it so it doesn't touch and then I'm gonna tack it, all right? And that's it, that's done, that's tacked. Now, over time, it's gonna get coated up with the zinc. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna dis disconnect the power, raise up, maybe have somebody hold this up for you. Somebody wanna hold that up for me? Yeah, and then you see these pits here? See this, see how black it got? We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the file, single cut file, and on the forward, we're just gonna take it, and this is only when, it's, when, when we start to notice that the copper's gone. So these, these electrode tips, they can be filed flat, and that gets the zinc coating and it makes for a better connection for a better weld. Now if you get the bottom one, you gotta do the top one as well. So if there's zinc on the bottom, there's probably zinc on the top. And that's pretty much it. That's a pretty good, that's ready for the next person. And then this just goes down in here, all right? And that'll get you going for now. Now what, what else we have to do is, we're gonna cut a two by two piece, I'm gonna put it down in the bottom, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tack that as well, and then it's ready for some felt. So we'll let you guys work for about another five, six minutes and see how far you get. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna create the bottom piece. You could just use the guide for that to make a two inch line, two inch cut. So I'm gonna line it up at two inches and then I'm just gonna shear it off. Actually, I'm gonna take a little bit more than two inches off, maybe like an eighth on one side. And then I'm gonna make sure that we're at about one and seven eighths, almost two inches on the other side. And then I'm gonna trim the corners a little bit. So I'll take a pair of snips and we'll trim the corners. Just a tad, just trim those corners right there a little bit. Little notches. And now we're gonna tack weld. It should fit in the bottom, like that. And now we're gonna tack weld it together in the bottom. And again, you gotta make sure that it wants to touch right there. I got another electrode that's a little wider. This one will work, you just gotta make sure it doesn't touch. Oh yeah, I just connected it to me. Clean electrode, so we're good there for a second. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Now this gets a hot. As you're doing the four sides, it warms it up, so you might need the glove. I would get the glove if I was you. And then you gotta do quality control. If it falls out like that, the tack isn't good enough. So that's quality control. So that's hot. I'm not gonna touch that with my bare hand. And we're gonna put those welds on. I specifically did not count to two seconds because I wanted to see if it would pop out like that. So if it pops out, that, that failed quality, the quality inspection process. So what you gotta do, and actually I'm gonna keep the glove on for this one because it is getting hot. And I'm gonna run it for about two seconds and make sure I keep it one Mississippi, two Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. See the sparks? We're gonna get a good connection on that one. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. One Mississippi, two. And then one last good tack. And then again, all right, cool it down. Quality control, no piece comes out, we're good to go. And all that white stuff is the zinc. Now you're ready to put the padding on. So we're gonna use this heavy duty adhesive. 
When you're cleaning it out, if the tip is dirty, make sure to pull the tip off and clean it. A little bit of a PVC cleaner also works real good right there. But it should fan, it should fan. So it's not fanning, so I'm gonna go ahead, I think I can also scrape it. You can pull the tip out. If you do it with the tip in, it could shoot up at you. And then also, you can also scrape the tip to get the glue that's stuck in there out. Sometimes soaking them in the PVC glue works really good for the PVC cleaner. And then be careful depressing it back in because it'll pop out. All right, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna squirt a little bit on this here. And then we're gonna let it dry for a few minutes after I tack it. So I'll squirt a little bit on there. I'm gonna tack it to my metal, my metal box. It's still a little warm. All right, and then we're gonna push it down. And then I'm gonna let it come up and come in contact with the air for about, really about three, four minutes is fine, but it's supposed to be about 15 minutes. That just, uh, the oxygen allows it to become a little bit more tacky. And then eventually, uh, when I push it back down, it'll be a good cut. It'll be a good, uh, good stick, good, good tack. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it back down because we're running out of time today. And now, what you're gonna do with your box is you're gonna take the scissors. Oh, I got stuck to the pad. We're gonna take the scissors and we're gonna trim out around the box. So we're gonna trim. Normally we let it cool down a little more, but we're running out of time. So just trim along the edge. And this is just again, you're gonna set it on your dresser. Those rough edge metal pieces would scratch up the dresser. So, and that's it. That's your square two by two box. And what this is doing is this is gonna prep you guys for the eight by eight ductwork that we're gonna build. For those of you that are coming back next week that aren't seniors. Seniors, you're out of here. Good job. Thank you.